This video is your complete step-by-step -step guide for updating the LCD and mainboard firmware on the Creality CR10S Pro. I recently reviewed the Creality CR10S Pro and I had mixed results. One of the problems that I had was that the LCD was busted almost from the start. And when I replaced it, I found that I had to update the firmware on it and the main board to get it working again. I also found while I was testing that thermal runaway protection was not enabled for this printer. Therefore, I present to you this video that will take you through step-by-step -step how to update the firmware on both the LCD touchscreen as well as the main board. Now with something like the Ender 3, I read in the community groups that people are hesitant to upload new firmware because of the barrier of having to upload a bootloader first. Well, we don't have that barrier at all. In fact, this won't cost you a single thing and it's all plug and play. Now, as I mentioned, the firmware on the LCD should match the main board. That's because we need functions on the main board to be accessed via the LCD. And if those functions aren't there, we won't be able to use the printer properly. We're gonna start by going through how to update the LCD. And this process is the same regardless of what firmware you're using. So let's get started on that. So Creality has a couple of different places where you can download the firmware. These pages are linked in the description. And if we download the firmware from this page, we'll see that it doesn't come with a set for the LCD. When we unzip the file, we can see that we have a pre-compiled hex file. And inside we have the source for that, which is all of the files for Marlin to be opened in the Arduino IDE. We also have this page from Creality, and as you can see, there's a separate download for the screen firmware. Now when we unzip the firmware file, we'll see that there's a folder called dwinset, and if we go inside that, we'll see a range of different file types. The ones that make sense to us are the bitmaps for the images, and the sound files that are activated as we navigate through the menus. Finally, we have this page from tinymachines3d.com. It's also linked in the description, and at the time of making this video, this is the most up-to-date and best firmware to use, and I recommend it. If we scroll down, we'll see that we also have a download link for the screen files with the Dwin set. It'll take you to a Google Drive link, so we need to right-click and then say download. It'll automatically zip it, and we'll have the files that we need. On the right, we have the version from Tiny Machines, and you can see there's additional screens here for things like thermal runaway protection, and that's why I recommend this one currently. Now you can see that they've changed the loading screen to have their logo on there. If you don't want that, you can substitute the file from Creality with the same name. It would just be a matter of taking this and copying it and overriding this file. To proceed from here, we're going to need an SD card and the one that comes with the printer is absolutely perfect. We will need to wipe it and format it, so I suggest making a backup of the manuals and everything else that came on the SD card first. Now the parameters for this formatting are particularly important. You need to make sure you set your file system to FAT32 and your allocation unit size to 4096. It's perfectly okay to tick quick format and that'll speed things up a lot. You can give the label for the SD card whatever makes sense to you. After that, we simply hit start. With the quick format setting, it should only take a few seconds until we're done. The next step is really simple. We're gonna paste in our daemon set folder instead of the individual files inside it. That's everything we need. The SD card is formatted with the correct parameters and we have our daemon set folder inside. It's time to head to the printer. To upgrade the LCD firmware, we're gonna to need to flip the printer up to access the bottom. There are 16 screws that use a small Phillips head screwdriver around the outside and the base of the printer that you need to undo to get inside. After this, you can remove the bottom cover. There's no fans or anything attached. You can set the cover aside, ready to continue. We can now see the two separate components. We have the LCD as well as the main board. Now, normally when we print, we insert the SD card through the side of the machine into the main board, but instead this time, we're gonna put it straight into the LCD. After this, we can set it down, connect the power, and when it boots up, you'll see this special screen which indicates that the firmware is updating. The whole process takes around a minute and it should flash up all of the bitmaps that you had on your DWIN folder on the SD card. When the process is done, it will return to this blue screen and remain static. At this point, you can turn off the power and remove the SD card from inside the printer. When you power it back on, it will boot up just like before and if you've gone from the standard Creality firmware to the Tiny Machines version, everything you've done will be verified by seeing the Tiny Machines logo on the splash screen. 
If everything worked, you can now flip the printer back up and reassemble it by putting the 16 bolts back on on the sides and underneath. The SD card doesn't need reformatting to use again, simply delete the DWIN folder and use it as you were before. Now I found that during my review that even though I downloaded the firmware from the same page for Creality, that the LCD functions didn't match the mainboard. And that meant as I was trying to do things like auto bed leveling, the buttons disappeared from the interface, and sometimes I needed to hard reset the printer to get the LCD to come back on. Because of this, at the time of recording, I would recommend that you use the Tiny Machines version of Marlin for your CR10S Pro, but just in case in future Creality get their act together and release a proper set of updated firmware, I'll take you through how to do theirs, as well as uploading the Tiny Machines version. First things first, Tiny Machines and Creality are both using Marlin. Creality is using an older branch, 1.1.6, and Tiny Machines is using at the time of recording the most current version, 1.1.9. The other main difference is that some versions of the firmware come with the source ready to be compiled in the Arduino IDE, while other versions have a pre-compiled hex file that you flash directly to the printer. If you're compiling from a hex file, you'll notice a .hex file, but if you're compiling from source, you'll generally have a folder called Marlin, and inside that you'll have a bunch of files that end with .h or .cpp, as well as one file that ends with .ino. To open these, you're going to need to download the Arduino IDE. The link for this page is in the description. Whether you're uploading from the source or from a hex file, you will need to plug the USB cable between your computer and the 3D printer now. If it's your first time doing this, you'll probably need to install a driver so your computer will recognize your printer. Link in the description for this download as well. Back in our Marlin source folder, we're going to double click marlin.ino. This will open up the Marlin firmware and there's only a couple of small steps that we need to do to upload to the board. First, we're gonna come up to Tools and set our board to an Arduino Mega or Mega 2560. Next, we're gonna to return to Tools and come to Port and select the correct port. If nothing is coming up here, it means you definitely need that driver. Now, all you should have to do is to click the right arrow, which means Upload. During this compilation phase, it's creating a hex file and after it's done this, it will switch to uploading and after a minute or so, it'll say done uploading. I'm going to verify that this has worked correctly by connecting via terminal in Pronterface. Creality have customized the versioning, but it is based on Marlin 1.1.6 and the source files were last edited at the end of 2017 by Creality. You should also see the current date that you compiled the firmware. If you're seeing all of these things, then you know you've uploaded your firmware correctly. So we've covered if we have the Marlin source files, but what if all we have is a hex file that's been pre-compiled for us? Well, to upload that, we're going to use Cura. The link for Cura is in the description below. Most people just use it as a slicer, but you can use it to upload hex files. In Cura, the first thing we need to do is add our printer. So we're gonna to come to Settings, Printer, and Manage Printers. Now we'll click the Add button, Go to Other and scroll down until we find Creality CR10S. It doesn't matter that it's not the Pro version. We'll hit the check mark next to it and then add the printer. Now we'll switch to it and we'll click Activate. We can see that it says the printer is not connected, so we're going to restart Cura. Now that Cura has restarted, we're once again going to come up to Settings, Printer and Manage Printers. It should now say that it's connected via USB but instead of starting a print job like it suggests, we're gonna click on Update Firmware. We'll now click Upload Custom Firmware and select our hex file that we downloaded. As soon as you select this file, the firmware update will begin immediately, so please ensure that you're being careful to select the correct hex file. This process is exactly what happens during the upload phase when we send the firmware from the Arduino IDE. Once we're done, we'll have confirmation, we can close this box and then close Cura so we can reconnect with Pronterface. Now something to note is that the Tiny Machines firmware doesn't connect at 115200, instead it connects at 250000. We can see here that we're using the much newer version of Marlin 1.1.9. Tiny Machines set up their firmware at the end of 2018 and this particular version was compiled in February of 2019. If you're seeing this information, it means your firmware upload was successful, and I should make it clear that you don't need Pronterface to be able to upload firmware, I'm just using it to verify that everything has worked correctly. 
So hopefully now you know how to upload the firmware on your LCD, as well as how to upload the firmware on your mainboard with both the Arduino IDE, as well as a pre-compiled hex. Now, as this printer was shipped to me, it didn't have thermal runaway protection. So I strongly recommend that you update to the Tiny Machines version to enable that functionality. I've made a video explaining what this is and how it works in the past. I recommend checking it out if you're not too sure. Now there is a caveat and you will lose power loss recovery, but when you weigh up the safety of the printer versus losing that one feature, for me, it's a pretty easy choice, especially when it doesn't cost you any money or need any equipment to do this upgrade. Therefore, I consider this an essential mod and I urge you to do it as soon as possible. That's gonna wrap this one up. Hopefully we've covered everything that you need. If you still have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching and until next time, happy and safe 3D printing. G'day, it's Michael again. If you liked the video, then please click like. If you wanna see more content like this in future, click subscribe and make sure you click on the bell to receive every notification. If you really wanna support the channel and see exclusive content, become a patron. Visit my Patreon page. See you next time.